Hi everyone, my name is Jennifer and I am a children's, children's librarian and I am also the outreach coordinator at the Grandview Heights Public Library and I am here today with some book talks for birth through grade three. We post these book talks for this age group um, every Tuesday morning at 1030. You can also join us on Thursdays at two o'clock when we do book talks for grades four through 12. So today we will be starting with books for um, those babies and let's get started. Um, the books I brought today are a series of board books by Leslie Patricelli. And these are um, a cute little series that follows this adorable little diapered baby around on some everyday adventures. Um, here's some pictures inside. So little ones are going to be able to identify with some of the activities that our little baby friend in these books enjoys. Things like getting a big kid bed, looking for a binky, and of course dealing with emotions like being mad, mad, mad. So throughout these books, You'll see the same little baby on some colorful pages, interacting with pets, interacting with other family members, other animals. So these are definitely some fun board books that babies will identify with um, and talk about things that are very familiar to them. So these are by Leslie Petroselli. My next book is a picture book. This one is called, There's a Superhero in Your Book, and it's by Tom Fletcher, and illustrated by Greg Abbott. So there is a whole series of these. There is a something in your book. Um, in this particular one, this is the newest installment in this series, a superhero flies into the book just in the nick of time, to save it from the villainous scribbler. We'll see the scribbler here. And these books are very interactive. They, um, they ask the reader to do different things um, to help the superhero um, in his quest. Things like, you know, turn the page quickly, or concentrate or count, um, things that will help um, that superhero. But in this particular one, the scribbler is always one step ahead of our superhero. And eventually we find that all of the friends from the previous books are all tied up, caught by the scribbler and the superhero needs some help. And he's feeling a little bit sad. So we're asked to help and we're going to blow that superhero a big kiss to make him feel better. And once we do that, the superhero realizes that maybe his, the, the most super strength is not, you know, uh, speed or power or strength, but kindness. And so he decides that we're all going to show that scribbler some kindness. And when we do, then the scribbler becomes not so villainous after all. So super kindness saved the day. This is a very, very fun series. And there are many, many others in this series. There's a monster in your book. There's a dragon in your book. There's an alien in your book. And a Christmas one, there's an elf in your book. All really interactive and super cute. All right, so moving on to our next one, which is a, a, new, a newer book, and it is called Don't Feed the Coos by Jonathan Stutzman and illustrated by Heather Fox. A very, very silly one. So we all know what happens when you're feeding birds in a park. There might be just one or two to start, but 
by the end, you're feeding an entire flock of birds. So this book is a funny cautionary tale about just that. So what seems like an innocent gesture, this little girl decides to feed the coos. Um, but if you feed just one, what's gonna happen? You're gonna end up feeding a whole bunch. And so what happens when you feed a bunch of coos a bunch of food? Well, of course, they are going to poo. So it makes it a very silly, fun story. The coos poo all over everything. The coos are now a part of her family. She knits them scarves. She names them all. She takes them on walks. And one day, she decides to take those coos on a walk to the park. And once she's in the park, she comes up with an idea and discovers a solution to her problem. She buys some bird seed from someone selling it in the park, shares it with a friend here, and guess what? The coos have found a new person to attach themselves to. Don't feed the coos. Kind of a really funny story, almost a little bit like um, when you give a mouse a cookie. You know, if you give a mouse a cookie, all these things are gonna happen. And if you feed the coos, a bunch of things are going to happen. Don't feed the coos. My next story is called Saturday, and it is by Oge Mora. This is a beautiful um, picture book with some really, really nice collage style illustrations. So it's about a little girl named Ava and her mother. And Ava looks forward to Saturdays the most of all the days of the week because her mom has to work every weekday all day. And Saturday is their day to spend together doing lots of fun things. So after a really, really busy week, Ava and her mom have a really fun Saturday plan. They're going to go get their hair done. They're going to go to story time at the library. They're going to have lunch, a picnic in the park. And the most exciting of all, they're going to go see a puppet show downtown. So they start off their day with their fantastic plans and things start to happen. They get their hair done and then their hair gets wet. They go to story time and they learn that story time was canceled. They go to the park to have a picnic and it's full of people and it's really crowded and noisy. And worst of all, when they get to the puppet show, Ava's mom realizes that she left the tickets at home on the dining room table. So Ava's mother feels so guilty. She feels like she's ruined the whole Saturday. But Ava reassures her mom that Saturdays aren't special just because of the things that they do, but because they finally get to spend um, a day together after a really busy week. So they head home and they come up with their own plan to make the perfect Saturday a new plan and they have a really great time. So while things don't always go as planned and you know they never do and expectations are sometimes dashed, um, there's still beauty to be found in just the simplest things. And one interesting thing, um, Oge Mora grew up in Columbus, Ohio. So this one is called Saturday. All right, so I have another picture book. This one is called Eyes That Kiss in the Corners, written by Joanna Ho and illustrated by Dung Ho. So this is a beautifully illustrated book. Um, it's a story about uh, self-acceptance and um, honoring and respecting your family, family roots. Um, it's a celebration of diversity, and the little girl in this story, while she has all kinds of girls around her with big eyes like sapphire lagoons and lashes like the lace trim on ball, ball gowns, her eyes are not like that. She has eyes that kiss in the corners. 
and glow like warm tea. And her eyes are just like her mama's. And her eyes are just like her amas or her grandmother's. And her eyes are just like her little sister, May May's. Um, and May May likes to watch her every day coming home from school. So it's a really inspiring story. Um, it calls on readers to recognize their own beauty, not to compare themselves to others, but recognize their own beauty, recognize their own strengths. Um, it's very lyrically written and contains lots of honoring of um, Chinese, Taiwanese um, traditions and stories. So this one is called Eyes That Kiss in the Corners. So those are the picture books that I have brought today. I have um, a couple easy readers from a series called Flip a Word. And these are written by Harriet Ziefert. So each book in this um, interactive early reading series features a different word family. So word families help um, children learning to read to recognize similarities between words that rhyme. And um, it fosters their learning of the vowels and their sounds. So for example, in this one called Snowbo, you can tell that the sound that's gonna be repeated is the O-W-O -O sound in here. And actually this one has the eat also too. So beat and feet. Meat and street. So it has some different word families. Here's the eight family, the A-T-E great and skate. So just by changing some of the consonants in this in these words, you get a new word building upon that ate or the eet or the ow sound. And then you can put together some simple sentences using those words skate on a plate. So um, along with those uh, learning those different vowel sounds and the really bright and colorful illustrations um, that kind of work together with the words that maybe the kids might not know, but using the picture um, and the context, then they can put it all together and make that new word. So it's a great series that is a stepping stone um, toward independent reading, um, perfect for beginning readers. This is the Flip a Word by Harriet Ziefert. All right, so moving on from the easy readers, I have got uh, some nonfiction. And the first one I have is called Manhattan, Mapping the Story of an Island, written by Jennifer Thermes. So this is a picture book style um, nonfiction book. It, like it says, is all about the history of Manhattan. So even the end papers have some great maps of the island of Manhattan, all laid out in its grid style of streets. So from before the earliest settlers um, to the exciting part of New York City that Manhattan is today, um, Manhattan has gone through many, many changes, many challenges, many struggles. This beautifully illustrated picture book, um, it's full of interesting details about the history of Manhattan. So you will learn all kinds of things, including um, during the American Revolution, when Manhattan was occupied by British troops. Um, you will learn about the Great Fire of 1835, which um, there were so many people packed into a tiny little grid section of Manhattan during this, that one of the things that came out of this was the recognition that there needed to be a place um, for people to spread out, people to get outside, people to get fresh air. Um, and that led to the development of Central Park. 
And then also I learned about the, the Great Blizzard of 1888. So uh, there was so much snow, so much ice, the winds were fierce. And there were so many wires, communication wires, electricity wires, um, the elevated train, all of that ground to a halt. The wires came toppling down in the winds and the ice, um, the trains were stopped. And so that got developers to thinking about moving things underground. And that led to the development of the New York subway, which is really kind of cool. Um, you will also learn about the Hangman's Elm Tree, which is located in Washington Square Park. And it is the most likely Manhattan Island's oldest tree. It's almost 350 years old. So it has withstood war, it has withstood storms and disease, um, all kinds of things, just like the island of Manhattan itself. So Manhattan, which is just over 13 miles long, um, just over two and a half miles wide at its widest point, and is home to over 1.6 million people, not to mention the millions that come in to work there every day, the millions that come in every day um, to visit. So there's a lot going on there. Um, Manhattan is full of amazing history, and this was an amazing book, Manhattan, Mapping the Story of an Island. So I have some more nonfiction, two of them here. Um, this one's called Good Night Stories for Rebel Girls. So there are a couple here. Um, this one is 100 Tales of Extraordinary Women. And this one is 100 Immigrant Women Who Changed the World. And they were written by Elena Favilli and Francesca Cavello. So these are really, really great stories. Um, they contain uh, about a hundred different, what they call bedtime stories, but are actually short biographies, one page biographies about um, extraordinary women from the past and from the present. Very uh, nice, succinct, succinct um, biographies about these women in one page um, and also have an illustration of each one and the illustrations were done by over 60 women from all over the world different artists so they kind of read a little bit um, like a bedtime story almost like a fairy tale um, but are definitely biographies and in the the back there is a list of all the illustrators so you could learn some more about them um you can draw your own portrait write your own story so good night stories for rebel girls and the 100 immigrant women who changed the world so these are great and of course reinforce that notion that girls can be anything that they um want to be all right, so those are the nonfiction stories, books that I bought. I've got a beginning chapter book. This is called Dory Phantasmagory by Abby Hanlon. And this is the first one in a series. A lot of fun. And just a quick look inside, you can see lots of illustrations, um, many of which look like they're almost drawn by a child. So Dory, uh, she knows that it is hard to be a little sibling. Um, she wants so badly for her older brother and her older sister to play with her, but they find Dory to be too much of a baby for that. So she has to take, um, she has to make her own fun filled days. So Dory plays with imaginary friends. She battles monsters. She pretends to be a dog and all kinds of funny things um, that make her older siblings just roll their eyes. Um, Dory and her imaginary friend Mary and her fairy godfather, Mr. Nuggy, they must fight the bad witch named Mrs. Gobblecracker and all kinds of other silly adventures. So this little series, it's full of the simple illustrations like I showed you, 
Um, and it will appeal to those readers uh, who like a silly story, uh, maybe those readers who are a younger sibling, and those who are transitioning uh, from an easy reader type book into a chapter book. So this is a really fun series. It's one that my daughter liked when she was littler. Dory Phantasmagory. And the last book that I brought today is a graphic novel. And it is called My Beijing, Four Stories of Everyday Wonder by Ni Jun. So this is, um, like I said, a graphic novel. It um, contains four uh, stories about a little girl named Yur and her grandfather. So Yur has a... Um, a, a disability of phys she's physically challenged um, but she in the first story decides that she wants to become a swimmer and she wants to compete in the Special Olympics so her grandfather trains her to swim without using water um, in another story uh, you is bullied by some other children and an unknown boy comes to her rescue, comes to her defense. And in a dream-like sequence almost, um, she and the boy become friends. And as she calls his name when he's leaving, her grandfather wakes up from his nap. And he wonders why he heard someone calling out his nickname that he had as a boy. So um, it's almost like there's sort of a time travel element going on here. Um, a little bit of um, magical realism. In another story, Ewer writes a letter to her grandmother who has passed away. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, the letter is delivered to her grandmother as a young woman. And in it, um, Ewer tells her to be kind, be gentle to the mail carrier because he's really, really sweet. And it turns out he's actually her grandfather. <coughs> so it's the story of how her grandfather and grandmother met. Um, so again, a little bit of a unique um, kind of time travel element going on, um, connecting the past and the present. Um, so it's just a gentle collection of stories about life in a Chinese hutong, which is uh, a traditional neighborhood of courtyard houses and alleyways and it does give you a little bit of that explanation in the book um, a little bit of that history um, of life in china so this is called my beijing four stories of everyday wonder all right those are all the books that i had to share today i hope you found something in there that you would like to read um, you can of course put those on hold at the library um, pick them up using our curbside service or we um, actually uh, are open now for some limited browsing and some limited hours. So you can come into the building, take a look around and check some books and other materials out. Thanks for joining me today. Um, we will have another one of these uh, birth through grade three um, next Tuesday, 1030. Thanks.